Right then, welcome back. I'm Jess. It's Craig. Hi. This is Tell Me Something I Don't Know. The idea here is, I'm a landlord. Um, when I first met Craig, I had a number of properties and they were in a bit of a mess. And Craig came in, he's our, he's our lettings director, so he looks after all the properties at forthelandlords.com. We look after nearly a thousand of those now, growing all the time. And he's the guy that allows me to be happy and relax and have all the spare time that I want because my property portfolio runs smoothly. And this is how. Um, it's called Tell Me Something I Don't Know because, well, when I first met Craig, I didn't know, well, I thought I knew maybe half of it. I didn't know it properly. And the other half I just was completely ignorant of. We're going to talk today about... Arrears. Arrears. Now, um, just put this in, um, you know, frame it right before we, we get going. Um, we're talking about a very small problem here. Um, and I think, mm. you know, we, we love our tenants. Um, we very ha rarely have to take this action, but having it in, in, in the toolbox, in the locker, knowing you can deploy it very quickly is key. So you might not expect arrears, nobody wants a tenant that doesn't pay, um, but when it happens, you've got to act quick. Mm -hmm. And Craig's got a, a lovely way of um, you know, supporting and then also you know, taking the decisive action when, it, when and if it needs to be taken. Um, so we're not talking about tenant bashing here. Mm -hmm. Most of our tenants are, are great, but you have, Got to face reality and then know that this, this kind of stuff happens. Um, mm. What this has meant for me personally um, and as a, as a lettings business, so I know I had horrendous arrears when, um, and, and I probably didn't track, well, no, I didn't track them anywhere near enough. My arrears were higher than I thought because it's very, very easy to lose track of oh, places you know, he's, he hasn't paid or. Um, He's going to pay, he's going to pay, oh, he didn't pay, he didn't pay, and then he left. It's like, oh, well, actually, that was five months arrears or whatever it was, and then it's just gone. And when you piece it all together, you see a big mm. chunk of arrears. Now, I know, and I'll, 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 um, I'll do Craig's bragging for him, um, over 99.5% of our rent gets paid, yeah, which is exceptional. Now, you might be... It's just a number, I appreciate that. You might be watching that going, yeah, that sounds about right, that's what I'd expect, I want 100% of my rent to pay. If you're in the lettings industry, you'll probably think I'm giving you a little bit of bullshit there. Um, the, that is our true figure. Um, the average letting agent in the country has, actually, no, not even the average, an ARLA letting agent, uh, they quote their arrears rate of between, being between five and 7%, mm. so ours is 0.5%. Now, when somebody says five to 7%, I think, they mean 7%, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've bought businesses, we've bought businesses local, you know, to us, you, you, you might be an ex-landlord of one of those businesses. And when we lifted the, the hood, some of the arrears were, you know, the way we measure them properly, seven days, 28 days, and then bad debt gone, uh, they're in the high 20%. And that's, I think that's pretty scandalous. So we've, we've, we've taken, you know, every portfolio we've ever bought with from another um, either my portfolio came and Craig managed it or a landlord brings their portfolio in or when we've bought another letting agency we've taken arrears from anything from 20, 15, 10%, whatever it was and some of the ones we bought were, were sort of 20% and we've squished that all the way down. We've kind of put them in quarantine for six months, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then within six months and usually it's quicker we introduce them to our main figures and our main figures are running at 0.5% arrears, 99.5% of our tenants pay. So that's why this this video is important to you. That's what it, that's the difference it's going to make. Craig, over to you. How do we handle how how do we handle our ears? How do you get that such a good rate? The the, the biggest thing is approach. We, we approach every single case exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't you know we don't go off the path. We we have a a, a way of dealing with arrears. A process that, that works, um, and it all starts with contact. So what you never do when a tenant doesn't pay rent is jump in heavy-handed. You've got to remain calm mm -hmm. and you've got to basically find out what the issue is. I've spoken to hundreds of landlords, you know, that, that have got frustrated quite quickly and all that does is it, it alienates your tenant. It sometimes makes them afraid as well. I you know, saw one landlord, remain nameless, who took them to court straight away on day two or something. Well, serving scary Ser notices. Serving scary, um, um, yeah. Very quick. It, it just makes the problem worse. So, it was small claims court day. Yeah, yeah. within thirty days. Yeah. So our, our approach is always, well, it's, it's to find out why. You know, because because nine times out of ten you can probably resolve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it might not be, 
you know, sometimes in the time frames that, that you want as a landlord. But my advice to every landlord that's, that's experienced in arrears is try and work with the tenant as much as you can. Um, I mean, repayment plans, they are the first thing that we suggest. Um, so that's agreeing a repayment plan with your tenant for them to pay a set amount either weekly or monthly. Again, it might not be the full value of the arrears, so not every case is, is that black and white because you have to evaluate what they can pay against what's charging because you know, you've know you still got to make sure that at the end of it there's a zero balance. Yeah, it's um, a realistic commercial decision. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you do have to look at it, but repayment plan is always you know the biggest thing that we push for. And it's not just having a you know a nice polite conversation. It's confirming it, putting it in writing, mm. making sure the tenant signs it, making sure you as the mm. landlord signs it. it. It's making it fair, but also an agreement that hopefully the tenant mm. will stick to. One of the things that I've noticed about Craig's process is, and he, Craig said it's always the same. It, there's a, it's very insistent. It's not rude. It's not forceful. It's kind and compassionate in many many ways, but it's insistent. <coughs> mm. um, it will never forget. If you said you're going to pay that extra little bit of arrears on Friday, it won't forget, and we will call you on the Friday, and we will be reasonably tough. As you know, why didn't you pay that? We need that, and it's not why didn't you pay that? We need that. Okay, put the phone down. It's why didn't you pay that? Mm. We need that. What's your long card number? It, you know, it's there, and we're expect silence. We're we're we're, we're standing on this phone until. You, you've paid it because that that was the agreement. So it's 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 quietly insistent, which is is, 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 is really yeah. one of the reasons I believe it works. But I mean, it it also highlights very quickly because if you have a tenant that does agree to a repayment plan but then doesn't end up paying it, you then know you're going to face two of arrears. Yes, you know, so it, it identifies things quite quickly because if you have a you know a tenant who's who's telling the truth, they they will want to sort it out. Who, who, tenants, generally speaking want to pay their rent and want to stay they in the do. house. They, they, they live do. there, they've got yeah. their kids going to school, there. it's close to their work, their, their auntie lives around the corner, yeah. whatever the, it is, the, nobody the, really the, wants to not pay their rent and get kicked out. Exactly, there's no kind of reasonable or logical no. reason why a tenant would want to do that. No, I do, um, I do think that there are occasions when the way we deal with a tenant that hasn't paid versus the way that they might be dealt with by a landlord who manages it themselves that it's, some of these are tough conversations you know mm. and maybe not everybody is, is, is cut out to having those tough confrontational conversations i do think that we've got seven processes within seven days and then there's um a 28 day cap so we do stuff the process mm. now by being that insistent um if you're going to try it on you don't try it on with us whereas i've seen other landlords you know they come to us and say well this this is it's four months rent four months arrears or five months arrears or you know, whatever it is how how did it get there well the answer is because the landlord was just a bit soft yeah. and that it's, tenant took advantage yeah so it's just going back to the repayment plan as well so just to be clear it's not that we just pick up the phone and have a conversation with the tenant and a figure is just plucked out of thin air um part of our conversations with the tenant when they first go into arrears um is we offer them support links so they can go to the good website, they can go to citizens advice, because it's very important that they also understand what will happen if they mm. don't try and resolve it as fast as possible. So some tenants don't understand the process, they don't know what the outcome will be, they don't know what potentially you know, a landlord or an agent can do on arrears. Um, so what we do, um, just going back to the point, is we ask the tenant to complete um, a budget you know, you, you can Google it, you can go online, um, where they put all their outgoings on, and we ask for a copy of it. Because again, we have to make sure that what these tenants are saying is realistic. Is realistic. Mm. Um, and I think that's why we have such a high success rate, because we, we don't, well, technically, we don't just accept a figure from the tenant and say, okay, fine. We actually make sure, and I appreciate a tenant, you know, could, could put, or anybody could put any information on, but under those circumstances, it is usually accurate. Mm. Um, and, and from what they give us in terms of their outgoings, we can then also look at what you know is a reasonable um, amount of money that they can pay. Um, and like I said, it works. It works. The tenant then feels supported. They don't feel you know harassed or victimised because again, that is so important because you want the tenant to call you to speak to you not be hesitant, not be afraid, not be scared. Because when you start going into that territory... They lock off, they won't answer yeah. their phone, you can't deal with it, and then you're straight into a very expensive process, which is 
the arrears of building and you've got to evict them. Yeah. And, and that is a disaster. Mm. As far as we're concerned, landlords are concerned, that's a disaster because exactly. you know, the void is prolonged. You know, our average void is uh, well, un under a week, you know, tiny, mm. tiny little void. Um, yeah. uh, well, it's also as well a lot. A lot of tenants that you know work full time, for example, that you know people's circumstances change all the time, don't they? Mm. And if somebody just suddenly loses their jobs, um, we always ask them to speak to the local authority because sometimes mm. they don't think of doing that. Um, they may be able to offer a housing benefit, yep. even just temporary. Yeah, yeah. Temporary, yeah. You know, and, and, and we never refuse that. We yep. never object to that um, because again, the more support your tenant can get when they're in that situation the better. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we also do push for that and we also do ask the tenant for proof that they have Done it. attended, yep. they have called um, because they do get email confirmation. So again, we make sure that the tenants are also doing everything that they can. Yep. Um, let's go just a little bit further. I mean, not don't, don't want to dwell on it too much, but of course, after, um, there's a lot that happens, I'm not true, there's, there's a little bit that happens in the seven days, you know, because sometimes you know, they just forgot the standard order didn't work. So seven days, there's, there's things that happen, but we're quietly insistent. After the seven days, things start wrapping up. There's a notice of intention at seven days, mm. um, and this process starts happening. But after 28 days, um, a calendar month, if they still haven't paid, we do take it a bit further. At what point do we contact the guarantor? Because if there's a guarantor, they get contacted as well. We do notify the guarantors probably within the first mm. 48 hours. Mm. Um, because again, if, if you are self-managing and you have guarantors, I personally have seen cases where guarantors have been voided because they've been notified too late. Too late. Yeah. Um, and what you class as too late, it, mm. it could be anything. You know, it depends on the judge on the day. But we notify guarantors within two days, yeah. um, just as an information only. Again, not a, nothing other yeah. than that. Please be aware. Ex, you know, Joe Bloggs has not paid their rent. It's polite not to do it on the first day or two in case the tenant, you know, maybe it's their, yeah. their mum, their dad, their grandmother, whoever, you know. So, yeah, you know, give, the, give them a chance. Um, but, but guarantors can count a claim yeah. that they were not notified of the notified. arrears and not given the opportunity. Mm. So, so it's, it's vital that you tell them straight away. Once um, and if um, we go legal, let's, let's call it that, um, we see a high percentage of, I mean, don't forget, a high percentage of cases that have got this far is not many. Uh, we'll talk in a minute about how you reduce the number. How do we get to that 0.5%? And it's all the other stuff before it. But when you actually get to the final number, and how many have we had to do this to this year out of a 1,000 tenancies? Evictions. Yeah, I got, got actually get, threaten it even. Oh, crikey. But 10? Yeah. How That's many have we actually enough. evicted through the court process this year? One. Yeah. So you can see, it's a very, very small amount. <clears throat> it works, it works. Mm. Um, do you want to talk about the twin track, getting possession, getting the arrears, the way we do it differently? Yeah, so, I mean, eviction pre <coughs> proceedings, you know, they're lengthy, it's unavoidable. They're also costly, um, but ultimately, you know, sometimes they, they are needed. Yeah, yeah. Um, with us though, to be honest, we, we tend to resolve a lot of the things, like we just said, we only had one case that ever went that far. Mm -hmm. um, and we do tend to, to resolve it and get the arrears. Um, if, it, if it does go to court um, on eviction and arrears, um, we always recommend obviously going for possession and arrears because they are two completely different things. Yeah. Um, you can instruct proceedings on both at once. Yeah. Um, but then you go into the realms. Down. But then you go into the realms of your section eight again, making sure all your notices are served correctly. Yeah. Um, because even if you do serve a section twenty one, you can still serve a section eight with it, yep. um, which allows you to start court proceedings early. It won't get you possession early, but you can kickstart that process. Yeah. And again, if you are finding yourself in a position where your tenants are, you know, multiple months in arrears, by serving a section eight can sometimes resolve it on its own. Yeah. Um, so again, it, it's knowing what notices you can serve, the time frames involved, uh, and just making sure that you tick every box. Cool. Well, that's, that's been useful. Um, final thing from me, <coughs> excuse me, I believe that um, we reduce our um, occurrence of this problem by being good landlords, providing a decent and safe home, and that attracts good tenants. And when mm. we do that, we're working with a group of people, our tenants, that are less likely to cause us problems. So you can stop a lot of this further upstream 
by um, being that kind of landlord. I, f I firmly believe in that. But when it does happen, it's nice to know that this process is there. It's very supportive, collaborative, it, but it is insistent and it has got a cut-off point and then we take decisive, decisive action. So that's how we do it. Um, thanks, Craig. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, if you are a landlord who needs help on getting arrears back, we do this regularly. In fact, our arrears collection rate is over 100%. Sorry, our rent collection rate is over 100%. So we collect more than 100% of our rent. How do we do that? We bring on landlords with arrears and we collect historic rent. We do it, we're, we're a bit of a specialist actually. Mm -hmm. um, Emma is, uh, she, she, she finds it fun <laughs> um, working and she's not, not nasty about it. She does that nice supportive mm -hmm. work, go work with it, but she knows it's insistent. It's, you've got the contracts, you've got the rights and you, after all, you've provided this person with a home, you deserve to be paid for it. So if, you're, if you have arrears in your portfolio, bring the portfolio to us, we'll manage it and we'll get those arrears back. Um, if we don't, we'll help you with the possession mm -hmm. and getting a claim for the arrears as Definitely. well. It's a specialism mm -hmm. that we... Uh, well, it's quite bespoke because a lot of agents won't take on properties with arrears. Yeah. We're, we, we, love can, them. we love them. We, we're confident in what we can do. Yeah, as long as, it, as, long as it's a decent safe home and you've got your paperwork right. But if, yeah. Even if it hasn't, we can help fix that. Right, bye for now. Thanks, Craig. No worries. See you soon, bye. bye.